Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant, welcome back to the channel. Guys, there's no denying that EA have gone with a completely different approach this year with Shapeshifters in FIFA 23, but right now there's a big conversation that's being had on whether this content is fun and exciting, or if it is it too unrealistic and overdone. I want to dip into that conversation just for a little bit today, and of course cover all that we're expecting for today of content, maybe new weekend league objectives, and a player pick SBC is refreshing today. We got to look at all that and more in today's video. If you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new. Let's quickly go over yesterday's content, which was actually a bit surprising, specifically because of that one 84 times 10 SBC. And I mean, it was only one squad, which was nice, but the specific requirements inside of this SBC are what made us kind of be like, wow, it's overpriced, but also. It's making some of our investments go crazy. We're looking at his 84 times 10, which only has a 22% upvote on Flippin. 84,000 coins to do this, which if you think about it, 10 84 rated cards, if you were to get the bare minimum from this pack, would be about 27,000 coins worth of value. So, probably not the most worth at SBC. But with these shapeshifter cards and packs, basically everybody's doing it because it's the end game and, and why not, right? But these 87 rated cards, which we talked about investing in for the icon pack that really didn't come like we thought it was going to, saved us. Honestly, look at this. 87 rated yesterday going from 12,000 coins all the way to 20k where they are now. An absolutely massive rise. It's all because in this SBC, you have to turn in three 87 rated cards, which honestly is baffling that EA, uh, three cards of the same rating that are above the overall squad limit uh, that you have to turn in this SBC. It just seems pretty crazy. A lot of us are not even getting three 87s back from this SBC. But with that being said, a lot of people are still doing it, right? Because it's the end game. We've got great cards and packs. Who wouldn't at least want a shot at packing in Eto, a Dembele, a Garincha, and stuff like that, even though they're very difficult to pack? Uh, that's why these cards are going up. And honestly, guys, they're probably going to keep going up even more because as we can see in game, this SBC is going to refresh once every single day. We're going to be able to do it again today, tomorrow, Thursday, all the way up until Friday when it will expire. So, Every day, 84 times 10. If you don't have the fodder or the facilities for it, that's okay. This is kind of like a big time gamble pack, a little bit more expensive, but still one that is fun to do. And that's why I really believe that fodder is going to continue to rise during the week, at least until like Thursday, I would imagine. These 87s might go 22, 23,000 coins by the time we get there. Um, so I'm not telling you to invest in a lot of them. Uh, I'm just saying that, hey, they probably could keep going up. Rather, I would say if you're going to invest in anything right now, I would look at 88s because yes, these cards are up. Up. They're still 19,000 coins, basically the same price as the 87s, and they did go up yesterday, but I think they have a higher upside because if we were to get maybe a 92 plus shapeshifters or tots pick, maybe again tomorrow on Wednesday, you know, that could mean those cards go up a bit more. You know, maybe 89s could go up a bit more. It's going to all depend on the upcoming SBCs that we still have. We got an end of an era Conte that's still looming large out there as well. So a bit more of a risky investment because they've already gone up in price, but they're the same price as 87. So you would have to imagine that they can't be that risky, at least for a couple more days down the line, as long as we get more SBC. So that's kind of what I'm looking at there. 86s went up a little bit. These guys went up about 1,000 coins a piece. Uh, Bruno's always a bit more expensive than other 86s, but he went from like 9,000 coins all the way to 11K where he is right now. A lot of these other 86s are about 10,000 coins. So it's not a super crazy rise, but a little bit of one. And then your 85s, I think, moved a little bit. Uh, an 86 rated squad, you're putting in some 87s. 85s are going to be in demand but they just don't move that much because a lot of the fodder packs that are available right now and also speaking of fodder packs we have 82 plus player picks which in my opinion this is a really good value player pick it's only eight golds eight rares and you can get this player pick done for a mere cost of about what five to six thousand coins and uh it's an 82 plus instead of an 81 plus i have no problems with this whatsoever um and again they're not that expensive they're obviously not you know, huge W's all the time. It is a player pick. There are L's, there are W's inside of it. I did not pack any shapeshifters yesterday from these, um, but I did see people packing Zaha. Um, somebody tweeted me yesterday from an 82 plus player pick, a Garincha. So the potential is there to hit something big. It's just nice to have a player pick to go out and to craft through this week of shapeshifters team two. Now, shapeshifters team two is the conversation I want to open up today. And just shapeshifters in general, guys, has EA ruined shapeshifters? With all these goalkeeper cards that they've been putting out or goalkeepers that they have been moved 
from inside the sticks to either center back or to right wing, as in the case of Bravo or striker, like with Neuer and with Czech. I remember on Friday when we first saw these cards draw out, we were like, wow, this Neuer card, that's insane, that's super cool. But as it's kind of drawn on, has EA overdone it a little bit, right? I want to just kind of compare the pros and cons really quick of the Shapeshifter promo vibes. And again, I just feel like this is the biggest point of conversation right now for so many people in FIFA because, you know, we look at shapeshifters this year, we compare it to other years, and especially like last year on FIFA 22, it is completely, completely different. I think the pros to this year is, I mean, this is truly more like crazy and silly fun with these shapeshifter cards having the icon like check, having all of the goalkeeper cards that have been moved into these different positions. It is definitely the craziest thing that I've seen EA do in a long time. And it is fun, guys. I'm going to be honest. It's not the most meta. It's not the crazy, like, uh, crazy meta cards that we have seen in years past. Um, of shapeshifters, but it is flat out fun and it's a new differentiation of fun that we have ever seen in this game So for that part, I think it's a pro I do think they're maybe overdoing a little bit But we'll talk more about that um, And you know, I think it has increased the power curve as well. We have 99 rated cards now We got the Pele the first one still a lot of these cards are 95 96 But this Usman Dembele is pretty cracked. This De Young, I tried him out today he was really good. Martial was really good as well. Even a, a card like the Seedorf, that is an insane card for 320,000 coins that is a Dutch icon. Like, that's a great card. Petit's a really solid card as well. I do think that it has bumped up the power curve, but not a ton. Um, and then I think we've had really good SBC content, guys, and objective content. We've had a crafting objective to do the last two weeks. We've had objective players like this Pepe Reina. Whether you like the goalkeeper part or not, it's nice to have a really easy objective to do. We have a cup this week that actually gives a really, really meta card, a five-star, five-star Ganduzi, and some really good packs in there. So really, guys, it's been good content during Shapeshifters with the SBCs that we've had. Maybe not all the players, but the 92-plus player pick, right? We've had uh, a really good icon upgrade SBC last week with the 90-plus nation specific. We've had icon player SBCs. We've had good player picks. I think there's not too much to complain about inside of SBCs because the content has been really good. But let's talk about the cons. Like, how has this Shapeshifters kind of been... I guess, let, letting us down. How has it been ruined a little bit by EA? Well, we talked about it a little bit already. The position thing with the goalkeepers being overused. Like, if I take a look at some of the players in my team, and then, I mean, I'm using this team for objectives right now, so I don't have check in here because I'm just trying out some random cards. But, like, Devon Milinkovic Savage and Neuer on day one, that was sick. I think this is my favorite card out of this whole promo. After using Neuer for a few games, he's disgusting as well. But then, you, of course, we've had more and more of these goalkeepers that have been moved. The Emmy Martinez center back card, I think he's terrible. The card looks amazing stat-wise, but using him in game, he feels so bad, right? Um, I haven't used Bravo, but I can't imagine that he's that insane. Pepe Reina, I've come up against a couple times, and, you know, he's got that five-star weak foot, which is nice. Uh, but it's basically Czech, Neuer, and Milinkovic Savic. And, yes, the idea was amazing at first, but I think it is a little bit overcooked, guys. I really do believe that they've done it a bit too much. I think they should have left it with, like, the first two or three um, and made it seem a little more special than it actually had kind of seems now. Um, and then, guys, let's compare this to last year for a second because... Yes, this Shapeshifter team is nice, and even Shapeshifter Team 1 is nice with a lot of really great players in here, but it's no comparison to last year, guys. We have 99 Messi last year, 97 Sonaldo, 5-star, five 5-star, five this Hazard card, this Davies. EA didn't go as all out with the position changes last year in Shapeshifters, but in turn, what I think they did was it made the actual meta of the game progress further and the cards here that you see from last year's team and maybe we look at team two as well i think they're actually better for the meta of the game and for you know increasing the the power curve think about it how many tots cards are you selling from your club or from your team to get uh one of these shapeshifters in maybe one maybe two right if you take a look at the ultimate tots prices not a, a lot of them are just absolutely getting like floored. They're not just getting destroyed in price. They're kind of just staying around the same where they've been or maybe had slight drops. Last year when these shapeshifters were dropped, the TOTS cards absolutely died because these cards were amazing value and they were so cracked and they were just, you know, plug and play into your, into your side, right? And yes, we still had some good position changes in there. We had Ramos striker, Marcelo striker. There was some insane cards during this team last year, guys. 
and not all of them were cheap, but a lot of them were cheap, and a lot of them were super meta. This Tecatito Corona was an insane, insane Champ Shifter card, and he was super duper cheap. So, the way that I look at it is, yes, this year we have good content, but last year I think it actually improved the power curve a little bit more because it was, you know, more realistic, more... Um, cards that you envisioned putting in your team like left wing Ronaldo wasn't that much of a shape shift uh, compared to a goalkeeper going to striker or to center back right so that's kind of the biggest difference with the two teams I think and there was a little bit higher rated action going on last year but this year you have icons last year you didn't you had heroes last year so you can compare and contrast a lot with these two things uh, but the one thing that I would say is the bottom line for this team right here that we have right now shapeshifters team two is the pack weight and I think our um our view of this promo would be a lot better and we've had we would probably be having a little bit more fun if the cards were a good bit more packable because you mean Eto is super duper rare Garincha is super rare and they're always going to be right but even as I take a look at like some of the shapeshifter cards if I th think about how many that I've packed I haven't even packed the Giroud yet I've only packed petite center attacking mid and Cabrera I think those are the only two cards that I have physically packed myself from weekend league rewards from the 84 plus player picks in those rewards i did maybe like 20 to 25 player picks today i did the 84 times 10 didn't hit anything so i know some of you guys had hit other cards which is nice and of course if you pack somebody good it kind of instantly changes your thought process about the whole promo but i mean i think we can all agree that the pack weight during shapeshifters has really not been that good um overall so that's kind of my thoughts there on the promo guys i want to know what you guys think let me know down in the comments i know a lot of you guys are saying nate this to me is just not realistic so it's not that fun and i understand that completely but i, I will say this i think this week ea was really wanting to focus on the whole like goalkeeper thing and moving those guys out of position i really don't think it's going to continue into week three of shapeshifters we only have one more week of this promo guys this friday is the last release of shapeshifters team three unless they're going to do like a fourth week and then re-release cards and packs whatever is coming after this was probably another promo so i don't think they're going to do too much more with the goalkeepers after this so if that's kind of the big deteriorate part for you to play this game right now then it should be coming to an end i think pretty soon uh, but really in the end it all depends on you it depends on you and your enjoyment Wh whatever makes you happy on fifa might not make the next person happy so me trying out check trying out this neuer in the friendly modes and champs and stuff i like it i think it's fun is it a bit overcooked i can agree with that as well so it's it all depends on for you right that's kind of what i'm trying to say here at the end is you know we can argue and talk and have these conversations all day long about what's better what's not better but really it just comes down to how much fun you're having on the game and the enjoyment that you are getting or, or not getting out of it. So that's kind of the conversation that I wanted to have there. I didn't want to talk too long about it, but I kind of did. Let's move on and talk about today on Tuesday, the content that we're expecting today because the content keeps rolling. And with that, a refresh of one of the SBCs we saw um, just a few days ago, the, um, what is it, year in review player pick is going to refresh today. The countdown timer is set to refreshing today at Tuesday. And uh, that's an SBC that it's really only worth doing if you have a lot of fodder and a lot of coins and you just want a, a shot at something maybe different or interesting, um, like a player of the month of Mbappe. Again, you, you guys know some of the cards that are in there. It's really not a good SBC to do to try to hit something big because you guys know the cheaper the SBC is the worst pack look that it usually is so uh that's coming back today it shouldn't impact fodder too much in my opinion uh but i will say there is a part of the fodder market that you probably want to sell right now and that's team of the week cards team of the week cards are 26 27 000 coins and the fgs playoff sbc that was the one really making these go up is expiring it's going away after today unless there's something new that comes out these cards are probably going to go down further so i would maybe take the cash on these if you still have them in your club and then team of the season cards man they stay seventy thousand coins they stay inflated because a lot of them are still extinct um because their price ranges are not updated the, the problem that we talked about in yesterday's video with these cards is still looming large i think they did drop a little bit yesterday after there was no new sbc that required them uh but until ea do compensation and until ea supply these guys on the market tradable that's what it's going to take for these cards to drop down they're probably going to stay here if you see them go below 70k you could go ahead and try to buy some just make sure again that the cards that you're buying have a price range that could rise and it's not a card that is listed at max price at 65k like a ramsdale like this who needs a price range update um and can't go any higher than that so that's kind of what's going on today now i will also say 
Are we going to get an objective? Tuesday content the past couple of weeks has brought us those weekend league like premium objectives. Um, and where is it at right here? Foot champions bonus. Yeah, so this is going away today. Will we get a new one today? The question is if we are, what is going to be the two leagues that are focused on inside of here? Uh, because we've had Eredivisie and Liga Portugal. Will we get MLS? Will we get the um, the Saudi League? There's a couple of leagues that could be that secondary league. And of course, we're interested in that from a preparation standpoint and maybe a little bit of an investment standpoint as well. Because if they're going to drop MLS as one of those leagues, there are arguably a good amount of MLS cards on this game. Uh, that you could probably invest and make a good amount of coins on because their prices would definitely rise as it looks like some of them already are. How much is Rafa Marquez? 300k for Rafa Marquez. A lot of these cards are pretty rare, especially some of your best MLS cards, maybe some of the team of the seasons, uh, like Mukhtar, you know, is one that I think of right off the bat, or Carlos Vela. Uh, some of these guys that are really met up that could rise and probably have already started to rise. Oh, yeah, Mukhtar's already started to rise for sure, 190. So it maybe is MLS today. Who knows? Um, I mean, just watch the player prices. I guess we have to check for sure on Footbin if that's already been going up or if that's kind of been his range. But, um... If these card prices like Mukhtar start to rising into the content drop today, you will know. Oh, yeah, people are already starting to speculate. Look at this. On Sunday, he was 125,000 coins. Uh, yesterday, he rose up a lot to like 160, 170. Now he's 180K. So there's probably some leaks rolling around, I would guess. Based off of this market movement, it looks like it might be MLS. Um, let me look at like Rafa Marquez and maybe Vela. Rafa Marquez is just, yeah, he's been going up too. Since Saturday, Sunday, he's been going up. Um, what about Carlitos Vela? These are probably the most meta MLS TOTS cards. He is 100,000 coins. Yeah, he's going up as well. Guys, I mean, to me, this screams MLS is going to be one of the objectives today. So be careful if there are any cards that you maybe have not seen go up that much yet that have high price ranges. Like this card at Donovan, 45K max price. Um, you know, he's not up that much. He's probably going to go up some more. So just be careful with stuff like that. But if you want to risk it, maybe there's an opportunity to do some of that there. Um, so watch out for that objective today. I also could see potentially them not doing that objective because we did have a cup. So maybe they would say, hey, there's a cup going on and we're not going to give them extra weekend league objectives. But that's just kind of a theory. Who knows? The way the market looks, we might be getting an MLS uh, objective today. And then also, there's some uh, FIFA updates that are coming today. First of all, if you're watching this video right away, uh, maintenance is going to be happening. And uh, they have scheduled downtime. The, I think this maintenance is happening because we are getting a title update, I believe, dropped today on this game uh, that is going to include the World FIFA Women's World Cup update on this game. And that's all that the timeline, like the notes are. For this uh, update, it's all just EA adding stuff in for the, the Women's World Cup. But I'll tell you guys this. Every single time they do downtime and maintenance and every single time they do an update like this, something changes in the gameplay. So just be prepared for gameplay to somehow change between now, this weekend. It's somehow going to feel different. I almost guarantee you because every time they do an update, even as simple as that to this game, it changes things on this game. So that's kind of the video for today, guys. I know there's a lot going on in this game. It may seem like they're not, but there really is. There's a lot of content that's being dropped. There's plenty of craftability right now with the crafting upgrades, with the icon of species you can craft, and maybe EA will surprise us with something else today that we weren't expecting. Like maybe that end of an era Conte finally gets dropped. We'll have to see you guys today at content. We'll be checking it out live on stream. Check that link down below in the description. And if you want to see some of the packs we opened yesterday on stream, click this link right here where we open some of those 84 times 10s but that's gonna be a video for today guys if you did enjoy drop a thumbs up on it comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you're new it's been Nathan for the count see you guys tomorrow peace out